Greetings YouTube. Today I'll be reviewing a module, the Tower of uh, Boon Companions. Um, this is a product from uh, Small Niche Games and for the uh, White Box One Shots. This is written by Peter Spahn with artist v, uh, JV West and maps by Tim Harton. And uh, once again, uh, Tim does an excellent job with maps. They're some of my favorite parts of the Small Niche Game uh, products are the maps. They're just so well done and so infinitely usable. Um, I'll read you a blurb. Um, a tribe of orcs has moved into the ruined tower, uh, a ruined tower and begun raiding local villages. On its surface, it seems like a simple problem that any band of stalwart adventurers could handle. However, the tower has once an adventurer's guild outpost and is said to be haunted by the souls of fallen adventurers. Rumor also persists of long-forgotten treasures just waiting to be reclaimed. Can the party drive off the orcs and uncover the mystery of the Tower of Boon Companions? Uh, the Tower of Boon Companions is a sword and sorcery, rather sword and wizardry, white box adventure designed for three to six characters of third to fifth level, about 18 levels total. It is site-based dungeon crawl with a number of different threats and challenges, some of which are class-based. So a variety of classes is recommended, although vaguely, vague references are made to the Chronicles of um, Emerith. Uh, campaign setting, the adventure is de designed to be dropped into any OSR campaign world. Now, um, as I've said in the past, while aimed at the, the OSR market, I feel that any of small niche games uh, modules could be used in pretty much any fantasy game you wanted to run them. Um, an orc is an orc, a skeleton is a skeleton, you know, monster, an animal is an animal. So any competent GM could very easily um, rub off the serial numbers and use this anywhere they want to. And those of us that prefer a more complete version of D&D &D would be able to use this as easily as you could with an OSR um, set of rules, regardless of which set you've chosen to use. Uh, now again, since this is a module and I don't want to spoil it for anyone, I'm going to have to speak in some general general generalities. I apologize. Um, so what do you get? Well, you have, as the blurb says, this is a this is a classic dungeon crawl. You're hired to find the tower and the orcs that are currently occupying it, um, and this used to be a uh, an adventurers guild. So there's a lot of layers going on here. The module presents you with a number of different hooks. For example, missing villagers, a uh, treasure map. Um, you are hired because the orcs are raiding the farms nearby. There's a number of different ways of getting into this. So you have a lot of options involved in there. Also, within the module itself, there's a number of things that could allow a GM to expand, literally expand, the module into different areas if they wanted to. Um, uh, and use it as a jumping off point for further adventures down the line. So there's a number of adventuring hooks built into the module, uh, which I always find useful because you can ignore them um, or you can use them. And uh, what was hinted at in the module itself could then play a part at a later date because you find out, oh, wow, we should have actually gone and explored X or Y or Z and we didn't at the time because we couldn't or we were wounded or what have you. Um, and now that the players are at a little higher level, you can bring them back to the same site, which may have been repopulated, um, uh, and then extend the adventure again. Or the characters may decide that this is a good uh, launching off point for further adventures immediately. It was the site of an adventurer's guild at one time. Maybe it should again. Uh, it gives you a new selection of some magic items, some new, a new selection of NPCs that can be used, and again, NPC stats are always useful. So again, you wipe the names off, write new names in, and you can reuse them, uh, which is always handy when you're in a when you're in crunch time, you know, and someone's like, "Oh, let's run something tonight," and you don't have anything prepared. These kind of modules can help you do that. And again, as I already said, the maps are just wonderful, um, really good, and I think reusable because. A lot of the times, people just don't take great detailed sketches of, of maps. And if, so if you take a map, you turn it around, and you use it again, lots of folks aren't going to notice it, particularly if you change the contents. You know, So that kind of thing is not difficult to, to, to reuse. 
and change a river to a passage, change a passage to a river, and suddenly it's a new map. Um, so all of these things are very useful to the to to, to a GM and and can allow a lot of play playability for the players as well. Now, one thing I wasn't aware of that that within the white box genre, uh, or the white box game they're referring to, there is no thief class. They've included a thief class in here for you to use, but I wasn't aware of that. For me, the thief, which was you know part and parcel of the old school D and D, is something that's been part of core rules forever. In, in my head, D and D has always included a thief. So the idea that there wasn't always a thief or isn't a thief in an old school revival game, I find quite fascinating. And it's here, but they also offer you some alternatives. So in case your game doesn't have a thief, because the system you're playing doesn't, or your party doesn't have a thief, there are some options in here for challenges that would have been tackled by a thief. But if you don't have a thief, this is how you might want to run it to cover that eventuality, um, which I thought was also a nice option. There are challenges in here for fighters and wizards and, and clerics, but your group is probably going to have fighters and wizards and clerics in it. Um, I don't know many groups that didn't don't have those in them, um, because you really need them to survive in most most fantasy type settings. Uh, so, overall, this is an excellent product. Again, I think it has a lot of utility for the GM straight out of the box, and as a jumping off point for further adventures um, down the line, and an expansion's ability in the event that you don't think that this is a long enough adventure. There are a number of places where you can make it longer and the number of groups that can be used again or before. This could be an inspiration to a GM to add a group in before they ever hear about this place. And so that this would be a recurring encounter for the adventure for the party, even if this is their first encounter with this module. So solid work, very well done. Um, Peter's done a great job here. Tim has done a great job here. This is just a solid product.